Well, hi guys. I'm not a, um, a big speaker, but I'm going to do my best to, to share what I know about time. How many of you guys feel like you are um, great at time management? It's your, you're excellent at it. So most of us probably could, in some way or another, learn how to improve um, that aspect of our lives in, in some way or another. And um, some of this may, um, you may fall into one or more categories as we go along. So feel free to ask questions as we, as we go, and I'll do my best to um, help explain these things. All right. So. To start with, um, just a couple of stats on if you live to be uh, 75, an average, um, on average, a person will spend 23 years sleeping, 19 years working, nine years in TV amusement, so doing fun stuff, uh, seven and a half years dressing, um, six years eating, that's a lot of food, <laughs> um, six years traveling, and here's the, here's the kicker here at the bottom is uh, most people will spend half a year as opposed to all the rest of that worshiping or praying. So of course this is just an average, but um, just to get things, you know, as we think about time and what we do with our time, um, putting into perspective really what we're doing with, with each day. And um, I'm, I'm kind of passionate about um, the, the value of the, each day that we are given on this earth. So um, just to start things off with that, I think it's good to, to think about and where you might fall in those categories. So thoughts on time. Um, Charles Richard said, don't be fooled by the calendar. There are only as many days in the year as you make use of. One man gets a, a whole week's worth value out of a year, while another man gets a full year's value out of a week. And isn't that true? Um, time just isn't given to us and, and plays itself out, right? Like we have to choose what we do with our day and our time and, and it's easy to kind of just take it as it comes because from the moment we're born, we have time. We kind of take it for granted. So just to, to get um, that into our minds to start with that we're not, we really do uh, decide what we're gonna do with our time. So. Um, I thought that that quote said that pretty well. Um, have you ever noticed that you're in a different mood um, when you're in a rush, when you have to get somewhere, when, you're, when your brain is, I need to get to this place, than when you're relaxed and you don't really have that, that deadline to get to? Um, anyone feel that difference? Yeah? <laughs> okay. I know I do. Um, there was an interesting... Uh, study done in the Northeast were 15 seminary students. So these were people who were in training to be pastors. Um, they were split into three groups. The first group, um, they received notes in an envelope telling them they had 10 minutes to get to a certain place across campus. Um, they were told not to waste any time but to leave immediately. It was uh, very important, they were told. The instructors said to them uh, to get to the inside place on time. So. They were, that group was labeled the high hurry group, so they were, they had that deadline. Uh, the second group was given 30 minutes to reach the assigned place across campus, so a little bit longer. Um, they were told that 30 minutes was plenty of travel time, but they were warned not to linger too long on the way. So that was the medium hurry group, so a little more time that they were given. Now the third group, the low hurry group, was given all afternoon, so they really didn't have any deadline. Um, what they didn't know with the, was that they had drama students placed on the, along the path that they had to go. Um, and they were playing out different distress scenes. So some of them were really sick, uh, some of them were crying. They were obviously in distress and they had um, some need or another. The results of the study were stunning. They point to a powerful way to the moral nature of time management. Of the high hurry group, not one person stopped. So they didn't know these people were drama students. They, they saw these people, they were aware they were there, but they kept going. Um, only two in the medium hurry group tried to stop and help. And of the low hurry group, every single one of the five stopped. They were all pastors in, in training. Um, they all saw these, these people. But what does that say? What does that say to us? 
Um, obviously, the implications are that the, those of us who are too tightly scheduled are in danger of having no time to help those in our path who need help. We are so uh, focused and can be on our agenda that we miss what's right in front of us. Um, and the speed and stress of our day can change how we treat those around us, and we all know that <laughs> if we stop and think about it. Um, so what that comes down to is time really is a moral issue. Um, we need to take each day um, to treat our hours and minutes as a gift from God, as I said at the beginning. Life is too precious to always be on the run. Um, and here's where I would go from here is a lot of people think if I take my planner and I fill it up and I get everything managed, I'm stuck, I'm confined. The truth is that properly scheduling and planning your time actually doesn't confine you, it frees you. It gives you time to do those things that are um, maybe less important or more of the things we enjoy, um, but I believe that those things are important too. Um, but when we, when we cram all, uh, either we have our things out of priority or we're not planning our schedule at all, that doesn't tend to happen, we're, we're stressed. So good time management actually permits more healthy rest in addition to higher productivity and the things that we want and we need to get done. It also can significantly reduce stress and anxiety. So how do we start? Okay, how many of you guys have heard the story of the jar with the rocks? Okay, a couple of you have, so I'm gonna go over here. Will my mic work okay? I guess it will. Okay, so. Um, a professor actually did this. Can everyone see this okay? Okay. Um, brought a jar into a classroom. Wow, that's a lousy jar. <laughs> um, and said, okay, pretend this is the time that I have in a day. And he put rocks into this jar. And he asked his students, once he had filled it to the top with these rocks, he said, oh, thanks. Go. Um, he said, if I can get this off, um, you know, is my jar full? Do I have any more time um, left of my day? And the students were like, yeah, it's full. So then he took some sand and he poured the sand in and it filled the little crevices and where they didn't see it. And they're like, oh. So he said, okay, now is it full? And the students go, well, I'm not sure now, you tricked us. And, and then he said, um, okay, and they said, okay, it's full. And then he took a glass of water and he poured that in. So that filled up even the smaller spaces that weren't there. And um, he asked the students, and I'll ask you guys, what do you think the moral of that is? What's that? And that's what most of the, the students said. And that, while that's true, what's important here is the order in which these were put in. If he had put the water in first or the sand and then tried to put those rocks in, they would have never ever fit. So what we can glean from that is that the, the priority um, level in which we put in those things is very important and we need to be aware of what those things are. Um, so I'm gonna start by asking, what do, you, what do you have in your life that you feel like are they're not necessarily bad things, but they're the, they're the water or the sand. They're the, the typical time wasters that kind of suck up your time and it's gone before you know it. Emails. Facebook, Facebook good. Anyone else? You guys must be good with your time. <laughs> Phone, good. Movies, these are excellent. Okay, so let's see. These are some of the things I thought of <laughs> when I started thinking about this. So Facebook, we said that. What else did we say? Phone, there's that on there. And now phone, of course, is everything under the planet. So you can waste lots of time on your phone. Um, so to, videos, yeah. Um, you can spend, now again, these are not bad things, but if you spend too much time on any one given thing, it can become something that, that really just sucks your, the day out of your time, the time out of your day. <laughs> um, so again, like things like exercise, sports, sleeping, all good things, right? But 
they can become, and we all know this, they can become time wasters. So, um, like I said, these aren't bad or evil things. Um, the key here is the element of what are we doing first? What are our, our big rocks? And I want you guys to think about that. In the, in the illustration there with the rocks, what are the things that you need to put in first? Um, I'm gonna go back one here. For a lot of people, um, big rocks would be things like your, if you have a job, um, your school, your classes, church. The things that you feel are, these things have to be done, um, those would fall under big rock category. Anyone in here ever read Francis Chan, Crazy Love, anything by him? Okay, great. This is um, an excerpt from his book, um, Crazy Love. He says, thorns are anything that distracts us from God. When we want God and a bunch of other stuff, then that, that means that we have thorns in our soil. A relationship with God simply cannot grow where money, sins, activities, favorite sports teams, addictions, or commitments are piled on top of it. And I'll emphasize that last piece, because again, a lot of that isn't bad in, in and of themselves. Most of us have too much going on in our lives. Um, as David Goetz writes, too much of the good life ends up being toxic deforming us spiritually, and a lot of other things, a lot of other things are good by themselves, but all of it together keeps us from living healthy, fruitful lives for God. Um, and what's sad about that is that the extra stuff that we're given, the gifts that God can bless us with become toxic, toxic and they can actually keep us from living good lives, um, as opposed to actually having those as blessings on, on top of what uh, God gives us as pri that should be priority. Okay, what's the problem with procrastination? Unnecessary stress, less time to proofread and review, loss of sleep, starting a poor cycle, greater temptation to cheat. When you're, when you're at last minute and you have an opportunity to cheat and you don't know the answer because you waited till the last mi minute to study or you didn't do what you needed to do, that temptation is gonna be stronger to cheat. Um, None of us feel very good when we wait till the last minute to do something that we know we need to take care of, right? It's hard to, it can be hard to discipline ourselves to actually do those things, and we'll talk about some ways in which um, that be, can become an easier task. Um, but in the end, it doesn't, we just, it's not a good uh, cycle to start, and we all know that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some, um, some ways to get the most out of your now. So things you can kind of, um, things you may already know, some of this may be review, some of this might be, oh yeah, I never thought of that kind of thing. And some of it, um, they may have someone else might have talked about earlier today. But um, these are just some things I, I remind my students of um, that can be helpful. Number one, study difficult or boring subjects first. That's hard to do, right? Um, who wants to, when you're, when you're awake and you're, you're starting your day, it's hard to, to get those things to actually go forward and say, I'm gonna do, for me it would be math, my math. Um, but if you, can, if you can discipline yourself enough to start that habit and then continue doing that, it'll become easier and easier and easier as you go along. And you'll get it out of the way, so procrastination won't be, probably won't be happening if you're getting that done. And you know, have you ever gotten in your car and, and driven somewhere and then realized you didn't even know how you got there because you've done it so many times? What you wanna do is get to a point where this becomes so habitual for you that it's just what you do, you know? Um, and, and it'll take some of the, the pain of it away. So that's number one. Um, number two is be aware of your best time of day. If you're a morning person, I would say do those things also in the morning. If you are most awake at night, do your most difficult subjects at night. Um, so that kind of flips the other one on, on its head, but um, if, if that is truly the time that you're most awake, just be aware of that and um, use that time wisely because that is important. Yes? What if you don't know? your best time of day. I would say um, take, a, take, take a day to kind of think about it and kind of try to be aware of 
am I, how am I feeling right now? Kind of ask yourself that through the day. And those times when um, you're most alert, um, you're most energized, that would be your peak time, generally. So good question. Um, so yeah, use that time wisely. Um, use waiting time wisely. If you've got 15 minutes of waiting time, you can get, you might be able to get a small assignment done, some reading, and you know, if you add, if you have three of those every day, you know, if you come early to a class or you're, you're uh, waiting for, you know, an appointment or something, and you add, you know, three of those together, that's 45 minutes. That's quite a bit of time. So be aware when you have those times not to just throw them away because um, 15 minutes is still 15 minutes, right? Um, so use that, those things wisely and also bring something, always have something with you that you can do during those times. Um, don't always just pu be pulling out your phone or um, checking Facebook. Um, use that time to, to actually do something that uh, you need to get done. Use a regular study area. So find a place that you find yourself alert where you know you're going to be awake and use that time as a regular study place. So that's your, your sacred area for study. Um, sometimes it's easy. I'll, some of my students will say, oh, yeah, you have a question? Um, what if you like a quiet environment, but uh, you don't want to be too loud? Um, if everyone, it's, it's when everyone's asleep or gone. Yeah, it's when it's truly quiet and oh, what can I do? Can you maybe plan that time to study? Is that feasible? I mean, like, uh, other than that, is that really, you know, it cuts down on my sleep when, mm -hmm. when everybody's asleep. And there rarely is a time, and if everyone's out of the house. Okay, I'm going to touch on that in a minute. Um, but I will, I will say um, I think it's important to have uh, respect each other's study times kind of conversations. Um, so I will, I will come back to that in a minute. But it's a, that's an excellent question. Um, so we talked about study where you'll be alert. Um, if you have a library, uh, I work. My office is, is located in a library on this campus. So I always tell my students, use the, that area if that helps you. It's quiet. Um, people are generally quiet in a library, right? Um, some students find that difficult to do because they know it's going to be quiet and they're uncomfortable with that. They're uncomfortable sitting in that quiet. So if that's you, I would say uh, train yourself to be okay with that by practice, by going there. Maybe it's five minutes to begin with, then 15, then 20. And eventually you'll, you'll grow accustomed to that. And I'm a big believer on that that's an important and valuable thing to be okay with quiet. So, um, okay, number seven. The, the girl back there, you had a question about this, and I think this is where I would say, um, have a talk with whoever you're living with, um, with your family, uh, roommates, and say, okay, let's talk about when, how we can work out these times where uh, this is a designated hour, two hours, whatever it is that I'm going to be studying. And be respectful of each other's study times. Um, I think that's a, that's a great thing to agree on. And it's, it's OK to say, um, during this hour, no, I can't have my friends over because my sister is um, having her, you know, that's, that's her time. I have another time. I think it's, it's a great thing to have that time in your, in your family life um, or over. For, for me and my students, it's usually have a talk with your roommate. You know, it's a, it's a great practice in communication and um, being respectful of that. So that's what I would advise as far as um, having that, that time to have um, in your home uh, respectful of quiet. Any questions so far? Any other questions? OK. Um, turn off your phone or your internet. This is really, really hard for a lot of people. Um, some of my students will say, well, what if I get an emergency during that hour? Well, yeah, that could happen, but it's not likely, and it's pr you're probably going to be OK if you turn your phone off for those, that hour that you're studying. You can turn it back on, check it later. Um, and that's another that kind of goes back to that thing of quiet. I don't think 
it's an easy thing to, to be okay with that, but I think I would encourage you to give it a shot. At least, at least try it um, for a little while. And I do say turn it off. Don't just turn it to you know, vibrate or, or even silent because then you'll see it flashing and you'll sit there, you're staring at your phone and you know that it's, you, you know, you know that you're gonna be distracted by that. Um, if you're not, come see me after, after this because I wanna know how you do it because most people, that's gonna be a distraction. Okay, number nine, um, be realistic and learn to say no. That means that if you're Big rocks are, if you have those in place and um, something comes along that is going to push those aside, um, it's okay to, to have those other times, and we're gonna talk about that, um, to have those times of freedom and uh, relaxation. I, I, I think those are very important, but if they're constantly pushing those rocks out and, you, and the sand and the water is, is the first thing in, in play there, you need to learn to say no sometimes, to say, you know, I can't do that because I've got these other things and they're first priority. So it's okay to do that. It's okay to say, I, I can't. Um, and I think the more you learn to do that, the more time you'll actually have to add those things when you do have time. And you'll be a more peaceful person, I promise. Um, get ready the night before. I really think this is a great one. Um, if you're going to classes and you, you have the Tuesday, Thursday classes, Monday, Wednesday, have two binders, one with all, you know, your Monday, Wednesday one with all your Monday, Wednesday stuff, your Tuesday, Thursday, and then the night before, just take two minutes to switch out your, your folder and then have it ready to go. Have what you're gonna wear out before, you know, the night before. So the next morning you're not scrambling around, running, you know, to look for what you need to put in your bag or whatever, um, that really does, uh, can bring down anxiety as far as getting ready if you're one of those people that in the morning you're just in a rush. Um, that can save you time and give you time to have a relaxed morning. Um, number 11, watch your eating habits. Um, I know this is, this is basic stuff, but it really does, I, I like to remind my students that when you're, what you put in your body will affect you and will affect your mind. Um, don't have a huge meal or no meal at all before an exam or uh, before a time when you're supposed to be alert for a class. That'll just really slow you down. So um, just, I would say, just be uh, watchful of that and, and be intentional about what you're putting in your, in your body and, um, and how you're taking care of yourself. before a test. Um, I would say drink, be drinking plenty of water. I'm not a nutritionist, but um, be drinking plenty of water. Uh, make sure that you're having, you know, a balanced diet is what I would recommend. Um, not too much, not too much caffeine. Um, I'm a coffee drinker, but I have to be careful because if I, um, you know, if, if I'm gonna get all caffeinated before I go, teach a class or, um, or something, it's not gonna be helpful. So a little bit is okay, but I would say in moderation, just be making sure you're putting fruits, vegetables, you know, the, the balance kind of thing uh, that you would want, um, that your doctor would recommend. So that's what I would say for that. Um, any, question, any more questions on that one? Okay. Okay, so evaluating your now. This means if you have 15 minutes, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, this is what that, that girl's talking about with time, what am I doing? Um, ask yourself, what is one thing I could accomplish towards my goal right now? That could be a little step, that could be, maybe you need to take a rest. Am I, there may be some people in here, and I bet there are, that are being too hard on themselves and pushing themselves so hard um, to try to get all that done that they're actually not getting, you know, they're not at peace, you're not, you're not getting what you actually need to get done. So that could be you. Um, or on the other hand, do you remember the, when we talked about time wasters and all those other things, um, if you're doing those things a lot and they're getting in the way, you can ask yourself, how did I just do that? What just happened? And if that's a, um, a habit for you right now, it's gonna take a little bit of time to undo. And that's okay. So. Um, just know that that's, a, that's fairly normal and um, just the first step in that is to be aware and honest with yourself 
And I'm going to have you guys do something um, that can help that. Um, and then number 15 is, could I really make the time if I wanted to? It's so easy to say, I just don't have time. I don't have time to do that. I don't, it's not there. Um, but sometimes it is there. We're just not using that time. We don't want to give up. We don't want to let go of certain things. So be, you know, know what those things are and if that's you. Um, then ask yourself, are you accurate in your time assessment? How well do you schedule your, your day or week? This is the time to be brutally honest with yourself. Do you have enough time to do what you need to do to complete things? Do you get to the end of the day and are unsure of where the time went? OK, so do you guys all have um, the, the schedule with the, that says ideal schedule and actual, actual schedule that was given to you? Does somebody, you guys have it? Okay, awesome. Um, what I want you to do, and you're not gonna do this right now, but I would really encourage you to try this. Um, there's one that says ideal schedule. You will fill this out, just sit down and fill it out within your current reality. So in each of those time slots, you have, you have a time slot for every hour for a whole week. Um, Include all your big rocks, so class time, sleep, homework, studying, church, whatever your day looks like, put those in there. This is within your current reality, so what you really have to go you know, on for your day. Um, then also schedule in estimations for smaller and more flexible things. So hanging out with friends, TV, movies, video games, Facebook. These are important too. These are not to be just scrapped from your whole schedule. Good time management isn't that. Um, it is saying, you know, if, if you're gonna be watching a certain TV show at some time or you're gonna be hanging out with your friends, don't just pretend that's not there and put something more important on there. Make sure you're putting those things in there as well. Um, that's the ideal schedule. Um, and then over the next week, take two minutes at the end of your day, or if you're like me and you'll forget, just carry it with you and write it down as you go. So it's basically this next one that looks like that is your record sheet. Um, so what you're gonna do is actually write down what you do in that hour. This is not a time to fudge it, to make it sound better. This, that will actually hurt you in the long run and will give you a false sense of security in this experiment. Because what this does, this is one of my, one of my um, students' favorites, favorite uh, experiments or whatever you want to call it in class because they'll come back and go, oh my gosh, I finally figured out what I was doing. <laughs> because you know, it's easy to get to the end of a week and go, I don't even know. You know, ever someone asks you, what did you do this weekend? And you go, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what I did. Um, so what this helps us do is to see where those holes are, where we're not scheduling things well, or where we're wasting time. For some people, it might be, I tried to study for five hours, and I burned myself out. Um, you don't want to do that either. So um, this is a, just an activity to help you really see where your time is going. So I would encourage you to do that. Give it a shot. See how it goes. And um, what you can do is just the first step to, to improving your time management is acknowledgement and then you know making changes where you need to do that. So um, give, that, give that a try. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about rest. Aside from sleep, we also need rest, right? They're different things. Um, you don't want to neglect your physical, emotional, or spiritual need for replenishment, for Sabbathing. I find I, this is, I think, a really important thing that our, um, the way that our culture is now and uh, in this generation is, is not very common. And um, it ends up kind of being flipped. Uh, while we must be diligent with our time, we must also protect our ability to Sabbath. OK. <clears throat> when God created heaven and earth at the beginning, um, he, he rested on the seventh day, right? Why did God, did God need to rest, do you think? Why do you think he did that? 
An example. An example for what exactly do you think? Uh huh. Yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts on this? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's good. So we make time for him. She said. Um, I think there may have been a lot of reasons why God did this, but he obviously didn't have to do it. He didn't have to build in rest for us. We didn't have to be people that needed to sleep. He could have made us so that we could just keep going. But I think there's a very good reason, there's many good reasons that he did this. Um, and I think it's good to remember that and to remember the distinction between rest and sleep, that um, we are fragile people. We're, we're human beings. We need replenishment every day. We need to rely on him uh, for that and for life. And if we, um, if we just tried to go for a week and not sleep, what would happen to us? It wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> um, so I think it's a really, it's a good thing to remember that and to take that as an example for where, you know, how we need to live and make sure that we have that time, you know, when we're scheduling our stuff, when we're saying these are important things. I think rest needs to be in there. Um, and we need to learn how to rest, how to be quiet, how to be OK with that stillness. Because um, that's what God did, and that's what he showed us to do. OK, so just in closing, I would say um, in, in looking at what we have as time, as a gift, Jonathan Edwards said, and I love this quote, he said, resolve that I will live so as I wish I had done when I come to die. Um, we don't have a guarantee of tomorrow. We're only given one day at a time. That's how God made it. Um, what will you make of this one is, is the question I would pose to you. Um, when, we're, when we start to uh, see today as a gift rather than a guarantee, we might take greater care in how we fill it. Um, I really think this is true. When we, when we just think that it's something that we're entitled to, that just keeps coming and we're never going to run out, um, we kind of tend to throw things away. We throw away our minutes, we throw away our hours, our days, um, in the short term and the long term. But I would, I would uh, challenge you to ask yourself this question. If this were my last day on Earth, what would I be doing with it? What, how would I be treating that person? How would I be scheduling my day? Um, and, and so th I think good time management really does begin with gratitude for what that is and for that time that is a gift. Um, and I think you'll see if you do put this into practice that it will begin to change you, your heart, and the way that you um, see your, your time. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.